if children are given a chance, they can really uh, be present. And I think that is up to the adults to, you know, again, this um, deep instinct to protect our children. It's, it's, it, you have to kind of work against it because it does want us to keep children away from pain. And if we perceive this as pain, then we'll want to. So that's how most people deal with death is keep the children away. And I think the children from my experience are curious. Mm -hmm. They might be anxious if there's things happening that are, that they don't understand. So they need guidance. They need it, you know, information to say, and they need to not be present if there's something severely traumatic happening. And these, that's in my view, I was, I wouldn't want to expose a child to something where they really can't understand and that the adults are drawn up in a big trauma. So that would be one thing. But for the most part, when, you know, a person is dying and their, their symptoms are pretty well managed, then, as you said, as, if someone's at home or in hospital or hospice, children come and go. And I, I love the idea of just letting them decide. And this particular story in my book was, um, I was working with a young man in his 30s with two daughters, six and eight, and he had to bring one of his daughters for his counseling session because... Um, uh, their mother had come down with a migraine that day and she had nowhere to go. So he brought her and I had a, in that time, a, a waiting room I could lock. So she brought her coloring books and sat down in the waiting room. And I said, come and knock on this door here. Your daddy and I will be in here if you want to come and talk to us. So she was quite happy and I'd never met her before, but I could tell the way she looked at me. You know, I just, you can tell a lot about kids, you know, are they connecting? Are they you know, what kind of child is this? And I think this is important. There are some children who have greater capacity than others, you know, and there's some children who, you know, are anxious, um, inherited anxiety often from parents, but, you know, are, who were born with that um, sensitivity. So you have to really gauge the children. But she was obviously a kid that she was happy to sit in the waiting room on her own. That told me something of her resilience. And so she came in, she heard the little knock at the door. I think actually we went out and checked on her and she came in and sat down and this conversation ensued where she said, well, what were you talking about? And of course he's like, well, should we say he's looking at me? And I said, well, yeah, we were talking about how ill your daddy is. And she said, yes, I know he's going to die like that. You know, and he didn't know that she knew that. In fact, the family system had been such that they didn't want to really talk about dying, his wife and his um, in-laws. And so he hadn't really brought the kids into that conversation, but he was talking to me to find out, well, what, how do I do that? Could I help the kids prepare? And so this is where it all started. And so we ended up in this beautiful conversation in a way that was very hard. I mean, I had oftentimes my eyes were filled up as happens. You know, I wasn't on the floor sobbing, but I was really moved by this father daughter conversation. And it ended up with this, you know, really um, <clears throat> creative idea where, you know, I suggested that sometimes children create memory boxes with their parents or their grandparents who were dying and uh, they're to create memories of things that would be helpful after so that you know what do you miss what we think what do you think you'll miss when your daddy's not here and she came up with this you know I, I would never have imagined her saying this but she said I'll miss his kisses mm -hmm. and I thought well yeah I get that so kiss obviously is very and so he's now you know he's starting to cry and then she had this beautiful um question for him you know like well you know what if I said to her, because I thought, I have no idea how you put kisses in a memory box. So I thought, well, she obviously knows she's got a vision for this, which is our, the point, right? She's got mm -hmm. children are creative and they know how to prepare. So she said, well, daddy, if you kiss pieces of paper, if you put lip, your mommy's lipstick on your lips and then you kiss pieces of paper and then we cut out those pieces of paper, we could put them in the box. And then when I need a kiss, I could pull it out. So yeah. I looked at him, he looked at me. And <laughs> yeah, was, I, I was reading yeah. that in the book and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is yeah. stunning. This stunning. child is brilliant in her heart, right? He knew, he knew that that would. And so of course he said, sure, you know, and then it, and then it kind of carried on from there where when he was actually dying and the fact after he died, he died quite suddenly and um, the kids weren't there because it was a quick, it was sort of an early, early morning death. and. Um, but they, uh, the, I often say to the other parent to, you know, if, if you think your child would want, why don't you ask them if they'd like to see 
the parent who's died or the grandparent. And so kids often know, even at that young age, they'll say, absolutely not. And then you'll say, well, if you went in with me, would, would you want to? No, no, no. So again, honoring their wisdom. And these two girls wanted to go in and, mm -hmm. and, and then they came up with the ceremony. Again, ceremony is so deeply intuitive if we're allowed to and asked her mom if she, if they could take the petals off the flowers around his bed that, you know, visitors have brought. And then they just basically decorated his bed with these petals and had his, you know, put daddy on there. And I mean, it's it, so sort of, you couldn't make that up. You couldn't really construct that. So that's what I mean about, in a way, creating space mm -hmm. and just believing that there's an intelligence. And I think this is true of our death too, that I believe there is an intelligence that we know how to die. And I think there's an intelligence, we know how to grieve and we know how to, we know how to do ceremony and we know how to be creative. These are, we're born with these things. So if we could just make space for those possibilities, then it makes, what it does to me is it adds beauty into the mix of heartbreak and tragedy. And so this beauty that children, even that conversation about the memory box, I could see how much he was so moved by his own daughter and that she came up with this idea and she was mm -hmm. excited to do it. And you'd think, how could a kid be excited about making something for after he's dead? Nobody would really believe that's possible, but I've seen it so many times that um, that kids know what to do if they're given just what do you think what do you think we could do and this is again basic basic parenting but it's not when you're in the midst of a tragedy you know you're just protect 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 so thank you for the question it's something that's very near and dear to my heart that I've um, we work with a lot of young people with children here at Kalanish, a lot of people with stage four cancer. And it's, it's the hardest work I do is to work with families where they're going to be leaving young children. I mean, it just every time breaks your heart. I mean, you just can't do the work without having your heart break. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't, I'm at, I wouldn't want to do it without that happening. And then, because then I'm somehow separate from the tragedy of that. Mm -hmm. But it's nice to have been working now 30 years in the field that I can say to parents how children do after that. Like, how do children, you know, how do you help children be resilient? And it's often in the way that they've been loved as children. Mm -hmm. And I say, if you've been, if you've kept your children safe and they know they're loved, they have a deep resilience. And I see that. Some of the children that I followed for years since their parents died when they were young, um when the children were young I've, I've seen these kids you know some of them are in their 20s I still see and mm. oh I mean they're more deeply human compassionate people who when you've had a loss early in life you know you understand loss and you understand people's pain and a lot of these children become just you know incredibly uh, deeply compassionate mm. and sometimes they lose their way you know I've had a lot of kids who lose their way for a time because it seems like the worst thing that could ever happen. And then they find their way back, most of them. So yeah, it's a heartbreaking, but um, you know, again, it's, it's inspiring to see what's capable in the depths of sadness and in the mm -hmm. depths of you know, something you just feels impossible. And out of that, these seeds, you've seen this many times yourself in your work, you know, it's the, these seeds get planted and they grow and I'm so glad I have enough years now, probably like you, where you, you know, you're, you, I don't doubt like I used to doubt in the early days where like, really, I could talk to a child about that and it wouldn't hurt them. So I'm, I'm so grateful for all the mentors who've shown me the way and I, I've watched other people talk to children about these things. I thought, oh no, the children seem okay. I haven't traumatized them. Or, so we're lucky if we have mentors who can, and then we can then become mentors to parents and grandparents. You know, there's so many children so close to their grandparents. It's a huge loss when um, grandparents die. Well, and I love that story because one of the things I think you're brilliant at is ritual, mm. which we've lost a lot of in so many ways now, like inviting ritual in. Um, and we're feeling it now because people aren't able to have the funeral yeah. ceremonies and the burials the way they used to and how important yeah. that is, right? Mm -hmm. um, so ritual and just the creativity and the wisdom in the room. I mean, the, mm -hmm. you guided the father 
and he learned and was moved by the wisdom and, and love and beauty and connection with the child right so so just 